Hey, Vono Community, Mark here again from Sound Matters. Now, today is an exciting day because I just received my Humming Goo, which is an ultrasonic record cleaning machine. So today's topic is about ultrasonic record cleaning, and in particular, we're going to review this unit. Now, this started out as a Kickstarter campaign in an attempt to produce a more affordable all-in-one ultrasonic cleaning machine. These units that are all-in-one purpose-built machines like the Degritter, for example, can cost thousands of dollars. So is it possible to make a ultrasonic record cleaning machine that's an all-in-one purpose-built unit for hundreds of dollars as opposed to thousands of dollars? We're going to get straight in that today. Hope you enjoy today's video. Just as I unbox this product, I'm going to give you a little bit of background about who's behind the Humming Guru. Now, the company behind this product is a business called Happy Well International. Now, they make toys, but what they've done is created a subsidiary of the company called Happy Well Tech. And the aim is, with this subsidiary, is to create and develop innovative products that solve real customer problems problems so hence the first product they're developing is going straight to one of the biggest problems that we all face as a vinyl community and that's effectively cleaning vinyl records but they want to create of course an ultrasonic record cleaner that is both all in one is compact but is now also affordable as well because ultrasonic record cleaning as we've already stated can be quite an expensive game to get into so in december 2020 they launched the kickstarter campaign which had overwhelming success and by 2021 the end of 2021 the product was realized and shipping included in that of course was the opportunity for them to get direct feedback from the vinyl community in terms of the expectations of the consumers now it's going to be really Really interesting to test this product and find out whether it measures up to the kind of hype and expectation that was developed during that Kickstarter campaign. Now I have to say my first impressions are that I am very impressed. It's well packaged, it's well put together, the unit itself feels very smart, looks very smart and it is incredibly compact. I can easily slot this into say an IKEA Kalax unit if I wanted to store it away when I'm not using it. If you live in a house where space is a premium this is a big selling point as a lot of record cleaning machines can be very bulky and take up a lot of space. I also like the way the product is designed in terms of the adapters that it ships with so that you can easily also clean 7 inch singles or 10 inch records as well. So it seems very well thought out and it seems very well put together. Can it measure up in terms of its actual cleaning results. Let's take a look. Now I'm going to test the unit of course with plenty of records but I wanted to go out and purposely find a dirty record so I went down to one of the local charity shops and I managed to pick up this copy of the Pretenders self-titled album here which is in pretty bad shape in terms of the well the dirtiness or the cleanliness of the record so if we just take this out of the sleeve here now I don't think this has ever been cleaned by the previous owner, I don't know how often it was played of course, but you may be able to make out on the camera there, there's plenty of finger marks on there, so this was handled pretty carelessly, there's a fair amount of dust on the record surface as well, so particularly on that side actually, on the, um, on the B side, that looks very dusty and there's lots of fingerprints, particularly around the edge of this record, so I'm going to try if I can to upload somewhere some audio samples before and after, it's always very difficult though with copyright of course uh, in terms of providing examples of before and after of commercial records i'll do my best and i'll let you know how that kind of goes on in the um, description of this video but this is the record i'm going to try so you can see that i'm going to try to use this unit with a very dirty record let's see how that goes just on closer inspection before we move on actually that this is pretty dirty this record i think there's some minor signs of mold in there if i try and get this closer to the camera here particularly this little patch here you will see there's quite a lot of of grime on that record surface you may be able to make out a small amount of the kind of minor I think is little bits of mold in the groove surface so this could be a very good case example for whether or not this ultrasonic cleaning machine can do the job now before we progress to any wet cleaning method whatsoever it's important to apply a dry cleaning method first using a carbon fiber record brush for example we want to remove as much of that loose surface dust as possible this will greatly improve the cleaning result and also stop us from just unnecessarily moving loose dust around this is particularly important when we're cleaning records by hand using microfiber towels but i think it's only fair that we do the same process first before we progress to ultrasonic record cleaning 
this machine is really easy to use and the process is actually pretty slick so to start cleaning we remove the water tank here take off the lid and start to put in some distilled water the water tank is clearly labelled as to how high we should fill it for cleaning 12 inch records but also how high we should fill it for cleaning 7 inch singles as well. Now 10 inch singles and 12 inch records are both filled to the same marker but it's important whichever type of record we are cleaning here that we hit those markers to ensure smooth operation of the machine and effective cleaning of the record. Once we've reached the appropriate water level we can pour that water into the actual basin of the cleaner and then reinsert the water tank into the side of the unit because of course this is where the dirty water will drain before we go to our drying cycle. Next up we put the record into the basin and we're basically ready to go. Now there are several ways we can operate this machine but I particularly like the automatic cycle which basically automatically switches between the cleaning cycle and the drying cycle. You can switch the machine to either do a 5 minute dry time or a 10 minute dry time. I chose 10 minutes and you can also switch the machine between doing a basic quick clean of two minutes or a more intensive clean a deep clean of five minutes i've opted because this is a very dirty record to go for five minutes cleaning time and 10 minutes drying time okay so it's just finished its clean and its dry cycle that was five minutes cleaning time and 10 minutes drying time the first thing i did notice was that the drying cycle didn't entirely remove all of the water the vast majority was gone but there were a couple of droplets still on the record surface so you're definitely going to need that 10 minute drying cycle and you may need to dab up with a brush a record brush of some variety any remaining moisture so that's worth bearing in mind in terms of how the unit performs the second thing that i've noticed is that some of those fingerprints those really stubborn ones that we noticed at the beginning are still slightly visible on the record surface so in terms of the first clean so far we haven't entirely removed all of the grime from the record surface and that is obviously going to translate into noise when I play back the record. We'll see how that goes. Now I did notice that a lot of the distilled water was just sitting proud of the record surface. Wasn't entirely sure whether it was actually getting into the groove. Now they recommend that you just use pure distilled water, which is what I've just done here, to clean the records using the Humming Guru. And they do say that if you add any other cleaning fluids into the tank that it's at your own risk and it may void the warranty but I have a feeling if we add some surfactant to this distilled water that it may help us actually get that water to break the surface tension and perform better in terms of the cleaning process so hopefully that's going to be the case because I'm going to try this with some surfactant next but first of all I'm going to go away listen to the record and we'll see how it sounds after the first clean. Despite the surface tension issues, the record did sound significantly better to my ears. Not perfect, but better nonetheless. That said, adding some surfactant, I believe, could greatly reduce the surface tension of the water and help that distilled water actually get into the grooves and serve its job better. So we're going to actually add some Groove Washer G-Sonic to the water tank this time around and we'll see if it improves the result. It's very simple to do. Humming Guru users, according to Groove Washer themselves, can add just a little tiny drop of surfactant to that water tank and it's enough to greatly reduce the surface tension of the water and improve the results in theory. So we're going to try that now and we'll see how we get on. And here you can see straight away we've definitely reduced the surface tension of the water. We're no longer seeing that kind of just sitting on the record surface and moving around. We can see that the water has evenly spread all the way across the disc and it's definitely getting into the grooves. It's visible to see that the water tension has been broken significantly just by adding that tiny, tiny little bit of that G-Sonic concentrate into the tank before we poured it in. That has made such a difference and these are really promising looking results. Okay, so I've just played the record and overall we're sounding much, much better. You'll have seen in that previous clip, of course, as I demonstrated, that the G-Fluid solution really did drop the surface tension of the water. The whole surface of the record was covered and the water was clearly getting more into the grooves, whereas with just the distilled water you could see it kind of bubbling and sitting on the surface of the record. So I wasn't entirely convinced that we were getting the best out of the machine there. So it's good to see that and I do think I've heard an audible difference again but it has to be said and this did have some very very troublesome spots on this record but it does have to be said that some of those trouble spots are still visible on the surface of the record and particularly on the B side where we had that very bad finger stain with what looked like a little bit of kind of 
dots of mold in there you can hear some of that coming out on the record where it's played back so it's a bit disappointing that that hasn't come out but what i'm going to say is i'm giving it the benefit of the doubt because th these were very bad stains on the surface of this record and so if i'd have picked up just a standard dirty dusty record it seems like this machine would have coped absolutely fine particularly when you add the surfactant of the g sonic fluid so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to apply a little bit of groove washer onto the record surface using both the black magic pad which is great for cleaning very dirty records because these bristles get very nicely into the grooves and then we're going to use the standard microfiber towel pad from groove washer to mop up all the fluid and i think between these two pads and just a once over with groove washer i think we'll be there and we'll basically have an entirely clean record now i want to see of course how this machine the humming guru performs with other records down the line this is just one example and i'm just finding those little last bits of trouble spots just aren't coming out but overall the rest of the record seems a lot better Better than it was when I picked it up. So anyway, I'm going to get that quickly cleaned now and then we'll see how it performs. Okay, so with a little bit of extra sprucing up, we are basically there with this record now, and it sounds pretty damn good. If I have been able to make those audio samples available, you'll be able to hear this for yourself, of course. But what I would conclude is the Humming Guru has undoubtedly succeeded in significantly improving the sound of this record, albeit I think you really do need that surfactant. Now, I do have to re-emphasize that Happywell, of course, the manufacturers behind the Humming Guru, do say that you risk your warranty by adding anything else other than distilled water to the tank. But my experience with Groove Washer products is they're perfectly safe and there's no real risk there involved from my perspective. I'm willing to risk it, but really it's down to you as to whether you would be willing to add anything to this unit. Now, in terms of the record that we were cleaning, it was a particularly dirty record and would have been a significant challenge for any record cleaning machine. Now, it does have to be noted that I wasn't able, without applying some kind of manual touching up to the record surface, to fully remove that finger mark. It did sound, the record sounded significantly better, but there were still some visible mars on there. It was particularly stubborn stain, and it's difficult to say whether or not my vacuum based record cleaning machine, the Project VCE, which has been my main record cleaning machine for some na time now, whether that would have performed better is almost impossible to say without having a time machine machine to go back and clean the record that exact record with that exact stain with a different device so anyway it's gonna be really interesting to see how i get on over time and if you subscribe to this channel you can certainly follow that progress but right now i just want to hear from you have you used the humming guru how did you get on with it did you like it did you not like it did you use surfactant did you not use surfactant are you thinking maybe you should use surfactant based on what you've seen in this video let us know down in the comments below i know there are some concerns out there as to whether or not it is possible to build an ultrasonic cleaning unit that's all in one like this with enough power and enough juice behind it compared to some of the more expensive counterparts and i think that's a fair question you know does it have the same cleaning power as something that's more expensive and i would say generally speaking you get what you pay for now the record cleaning process that i've had or the experience i've had with this definitely demonstrates that it works at least to some capacity does it work as well as something that costs two thousand dollars plus or any of those kind of units you can make yourself with the generic tanks and the adapters on top well that's a debate and a question for this audience let us know down in the comments below what your experience have, has been now i'd love to test this unit against the more expensive versions and as you follow this channel over time you're going to see more of these kind of reviews so if you're new to this channel please do consider subscribing and we will see you in that next one until then keep spinning Thank you.